I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. I'm standing in front of a good portion of my Louis L'Amour collection because we're going to be reviewing Kid Rodello by Louis L'Amour. That's why I wore my Kid Rock shirt. Because we're talking about Kid Rodello. Makes perfect sense to me. Anyway, what is Kid Rodello? It's one of my favorite Louis L'Amour novels. Published in 1966. One of his earlier books was also made into a movie around the same time it came out, starring actors and actresses that we don't know, we've never heard of. And there's very little information about the movie on the internet, and there's a few, just a few clips on YouTube, and it does look like a bad movie. And I, that it didn't do very well. But anyway, the book is awesome. And you know when we review these books, we always review the covers first because I love illustration and I love graphic design. And all of the Louis L'Amour books are got great illustrate, great Western illustrations done by great artists. This one I really like. This is a great painting by Gordon Crabb, the illustrator Gordon Crabb, who does a lot of the Louis L'Amour books. And he does a lot of fantasy novels too. But he illustrated this nice painting of our main man Kid Rodello with a rifle out in the desert sets the scene perfectly it's a great illustration I love the packaging of all the Louis L'Amour books who is Kid Rodello and what's going on in this book well let me read I don't usually in my book reviews I don't usually read out of the books but I'm gonna read a few passages out of this book because I think it's important to set the scene because this is a great novel this is a great adventure novel so let's read the very first paragraph to set the scene, all right? The Yuma Desert, east of the Colorado River, was like the floor of a furnace. But of the four riders, three were Yaquai Indians and accustomed to the heat, as were the buzzards swinging in lazy circles above them. The fourth rider did not mind the heat. He was dead. Okay, so we got four riders and some buzzards, three Indians and a dead man. Well, the dead man is a guy named Issachar. And Issachar escaped from prison. And the warden of the prison sent the Yaquai Indians out as bounty hunters to hunt this guy down. Now, Issachar was headed for the coast. The prison was about 100 miles from the Baja coast down in Mexico. And Issachar was headed for the coast because his rescuers were going to come ashore in a boat every morning for 14 days straight because they knew that they could meet Issachar there and sail him away to safety. Well, on the very first day, he, w he escaped in time that he could make it the very first day. So the boat wasn't going to have to wait 14 days. It was going to pick him up the first day. But the Indian bounty hunters killed him the very first day. Well, the Indian bounty hunters take his body back to the prison and the prisoners knew of Issachar's plan and the whole boat thing. And some of these prisoners, well, pretty much all the prisoners knew about the plan, and they're like, well, that boat's still going to be coming for 14 days every morning. Well, if we escape and we make it across the desert, maybe we can get the boat to freedom. And so what happens is our main man, Kid Rodello, he is innocent. He's, put, he's in, an innocent man imprisoned innocently, but he does get paroled the very day that Issachar's body comes back. Well, Kid Rodello, he knows about the boat and the plan, and Kid Rodello also knows about some hidden gold. So he's going to go find the hidden gold and set across the desert to catch that boat and make his way to freedom because he don't like where he's at. He, he wants to get out of Mexico. There's three other inmates that are bad guys. Their name's Badger, Harbin, and Gopher. And these guys, they're bad guys. They also know about the boat and the gold. And the, so they're, they plot their escape right after Kid Rodello escape, right after Kid Rodello paroles, these three guys escape and they go after Kid Rodello and the gold. And then there's another lady named Nora that joins the crew and she's mysterious. They don't know why is this lady wanting to come across the desert with us. So, so we've got these five people, Kid Rodello, Badger, Mabin, or Harbin, Badger, Harbin, Gopher. And let me read. I wanted to read another passage just so you can see how, how well Louis L'Amour describes this gang of, this gang of people that are escaping across the desert. 
in this brutal, grim desert that they've got to cross. So we see it through the eyes of Rodello, and he's like, Rodello thought of the men riding ahead of him. Tom Badger was calm, cool, dangerous. Joe Harbin was a man of sudden, terrible passions, of long, brooding hatreds leading to sudden moments of killing fury. Gopher was not so much like a gopher as like a rat, quick to run, quick to squeal with fear, but if he was ever cornered, he would be ready to slash out at anything, even himself. And what of Nora? Rodella was mystified by Nora. Who was she? How would she come to be with these men? What did she want? Where was she going? He had watched her. There were little refinements about her that puzzled him. She was, she was, despite what one might have imagined, a girl with instincts and perhaps the training of a lady. Her language was good. She had none of that careless, often rough talk of the driftier frontier women. She, she was obviously not Joe Harbin's woman although he had plans in that direction. Tom Badger resented her, and that was because she re represented a threat to their entire escape plan. So those are our five, and through the eyes of Kid Rodello, we get a good idea of who these misfits are that he's traveling with. He's an innocent man. He just wants to take his gold and, find, and get to the ship before the 14th day and become and get rescued but now he's got these ruffians that he knew from prison badger marvin gopher and then this mysterious girl that are traveling across this desert with him and they don't all none of them like each other they do not get along at all and then they are also hunted the warden sends the same three yaquai indian bounty hunters after these guys too so now we've got to chase across this barren bleak nasty gnarly horrific desert 100 miles. I mean, this book really reminds me of, you know, um, Dead Man's Walk by uh, Larry McMurtry. If you remember how Dead Man's Walk, Gus McRae and Woodrow Call had to go on the Dead Man's Walk across horrific, harsh wildernesses. And Kid Rodello has to lead these people. He's the only one that kind of knows the land. He knows how to find the water. And the water, there's no water except for up on top of these high pinnacle rocks. These big mesas where the mesas are kind of dug out, and so any rainfall gets collected, but they have to climb these pinnacles to get to the water. And it's very, I mean, the research that Louis L'Amour does about the desert, the Mexican desert, is just so interesting. And it's, and it's such a harsh place. And they're being chased, and their horses don't have water. They don't have water. And you discover the importance of how much water means to people out in these harsh climates. And he talks about how, hey, when the, when the Native Americans came across, I mean, they, they would go days and days without water, but then when they came across one of these pillars, one of these um, pillars of rock that had the water on top of it, they would drink and drink and drink and drink until they couldn't drink anymore. You know, you're, not, you're told not to do that. But back then, they didn't know when they were going to come across water ever again. So they would drink until their stomachs were huge and they would have their horses drink because they didn't know if they were going to find water again in a week. And, and man, just the, the intense, the intense chase as the bounty hunters chase them across the desert, as they are in this harsh wilderness climate fighting the heat and the elements and, and none of them are getting along and most of them are bad men and then this woman is mysterious she doesn't know then nobody knows what her motives are and they're racing across the desert to catch the ship before the 14th day so they can all escape with their gold and it gets crazy it's crazy can't tell you any more than that but the, it's such a great adventure novel and it's just then i i reread this today in about an hour and a half and i remembered I remember, it's one of the ones that I actually remembered quite, because I only read it once when I was a teenager, and I remembered quite a bit about it. That's how sort of memorable a lot of the scenes are in this. I really think this is one of Louis L'Amour's better books, and I was absolutely jazzed to reread it. You know, I think it's, I, I, I gotta give it, you know, about a close to a 10 out of 10. I would probably give it a 9.5 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. I think Kid Rodello is awesome. As is Kid Rock. They are both American badasses.